When I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, I was 14. And right after diagnosis, I left the hospital on prednisone and azacol. Shortly after the prednisone tapered, I was left just on azacol and I reflared pretty quickly. That really came as a shock to me. I remember going into my first emergency GI appointment, just desperate for my doctor to believe me. I knew that I was 14. I had only been diagnosed for less than a year. I knew it was likely that it could seem like I hadn't been adherent. I remember sitting there and saying over and over again, any time there was a break in the conversation, but I took all my pills. And finally, my doctor turned to me and said, I know, I believe you. And I, I learned the hard way through that flare that even when you're adherent, even when you follow all the instructions, bad things can still happen. You can still flare. I had to learn the hard way that even though I had taken all my medications on time, and even though I hadn't eaten anything I wasn't supposed to eat, I still got sick. I guess to me, adherence means having the best chance at remission with an imperfect disease. When I was diagnosed with Crohn's at the age of 12, I was put on Pentassa. I was taking five pills three times a day. I, firstly, I didn't understand what my disease was, what the medication was doing, and neither really did my parents. It was something more the doctors had told my parents I needed to go on, and as such, I was told that I needed to do it. I couldn't swallow pills, and so that was a really big barrier in taking the medication because it became more of a hassle to dissolve the pills and drink the granules, and it was also really unpleasant. I didn't like to do it. At the time, I thought that if I didn't take the medication, that meant I didn't have Crohn's, and so I wouldn't take the medication, and it wasn't unless my parents were standing over me, watching me do it, that, that I did. Finally, they moved the medication into the kitchen so that it would be something that we would all be reminded of as we opened and closed the cabinets. Throughout my nine years of having IBD, there have been quite a few barriers, mainly when I was in a pediatric hospital. Firstly, like I mentioned earlier, I did not understand what was going on and I had no way of being able to communicate. I didn't know the medical language, I didn't know how to say what I wanted, I didn't know when to say it. I didn't have the agency um, to really contribute to my medical care, despite my parents really wanting me to be involved and really listening to what I had to say. When I was in a medical appointment, I didn't have that kind of power. Um, the time and effort it took to take medications and to figure things out, oftentimes when you're feeling really sick, sometimes it's easier to let your parents decide and to just go with the flow, even though it's not really what you want and there's no efficient way of involving you. I didn't want to be different than my peers. I didn't want to have an NG tube, and I didn't want to be that sick kid. So lots of barriers, but I think, too, lots of solutions. Hi, my name's Moriah. I'm 21 years old, and I've had Crohn's disease for nine years. When I think about the role that my parents play in my Crohn's, I think about how I talk to them about my Crohn's and how we have open and honest communication. I also think about how I communicate with my nurses and my doctor and how asking them questions is important too. I do think it's trickier to ask doctors and nurses questions than it is to ask my parents because it's the doctors that can more tell if something is wrong because they have the medical knowledge to know whether something is off or not. And I think that creates more anxiety for me, talking to more medical personnel than my parents. So I think that's something that's really tricky. And my parents also help me with reminder strategies. So the reminder strategy that I use to remember to take my injection is writing it down on my calendar and then also writing it down on my family's calendar. So we both have my injection date and that way I can be held accountable in two different places. And I think that does depend on the reminder strategy you use with whether you use an injection or if you use pills. And I think something important that doctors should know 
is that it is scary to ask those questions that are uncomfortable and that are hard because the answer is unknown and it's more comforting when you're talking to somebody you know that doesn't necessarily have an answer that's unsettling and so I think that's something that's important for doctors to understand about patients.